good morning and welcome to our Christmas service. Very happy Christmas to you. Um, it would appear that a whole lot of people um, have forgotten how early 7.30 actually is because <laughs> we'll have people drifting in through the service, but that'll be no problem. Just a notice, the office will be closed for the week ahead uh, between Christmas and New Year. So if you need to get hold of anybody, use the uh, parish cell phone, or if you put a message on the WhatsApp group, it'll filter through, no doubt. And then also, uh, we will have services tomorrow and next Sunday, but they're not going to be um, put on online. So this will be our final online service for 2021, and we will begin again on the second Sunday in 2022. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you meet with us. We thank you that you stepped into the world 2,000 years ago. And we pray that you'll step into our lives today. Amen. Would you stand as we begin our service? I bring you good news of great joy. A Savior has been born to you. Alleluia. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Alleluia. He is Christ the Lord. Alleluia. We worship and adore him. Alleluia.
The Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Rejoice and shout for joy, giving God the glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I guess that makes it Christmas. <laughs> we celebrate the coming of Christ, the light of the world. Emmanuel, many the gifts, many the people, many the hearts that yearn to belong. Let us be servants to one another, making your kingdom come. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, Shine through the darkness. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. A child is born for us. A gift is given to us. Emmanuel, God with us. Bringing your kingdom of peace to all people on earth. Christ, we celebrate you here today. Now we join together in the praise of his people in the song that has been sung for millennia as we say, Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please sit as we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. And so in a moment of silence, we call to mind our sins. In John, we read that Jesus said, <clears throat> For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And now recognizing our sinfulness, but confident of God's love for us, we confess to him. Lord of grace and truth, we confess our unworthiness, to stand in your presence as your children. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our disobedience to your will. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Your Son, our Saviour, was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The shepherds left their flocks to go to Bethlehem. Forgive our self-interest and lack of vision. We have sinned. Forgive and heal The wise men followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive our reluctance to seek you. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Amen. 
May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself. Cleanse us from all our sins that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, the light of the world, born into human pain and joy, let our celebration of your birth make us bold witnesses of your love to the glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that as we quieten ourselves before you and listen, you will speak to us in and through your word and enable us to receive it in a new way, to perceive its truth and allow it to work within us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Won't you stand for the reading of the word? The first reading is from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. I'm reading in Sitwana. Irile mudimu asena hubuwa ganti lika mekwa eminti. Lego rayetu, ka bapa gofiti, mumetleng ya bukholo kholo. Wabuwa lerona mubufilong jwa malati anu, ka mwa ona, yo u meileng muwa boswa, wadilo zole. Yo ibileng adirile mafati ka eni. Ke ene marang akalalelo ya ona, le se tswanzo sabadimu jwa ona. O tsegedi ite dilo tsoote, ka le foko la tata ya khawe. Yari ase na khudira pepa fatu ya dipi. Anna ka fa le tsokong le le chang la borena kwa makhudimong. Anna mokholo khofeta ba enkele. Chaka afilwe boswa jwa li ina le le kholo. Bo kholo khoma ina abone. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. With the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn, shout for joy before the Lord the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let us clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Glory to the Father and the Son and to the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We have the gospel reading, please. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. 
He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of Christ. Christ Would you bow your heads as you stand? Lord Jesus, as we reflect on your word, shine in our lights, shine in our lives. Let your, the light of Christmas, the light of your incarnation, your presence with us, make a difference in us today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please sit down. I was preparing the sermon at the same time as I was getting ready for the children's service yesterday. Um, so my mind was in a different space. And you're going to have to move with me into that space and sort of find the children in you again. If the children at the core back there want to come to me quickly. Yes, come, quick. That's fantastic. And anybody else that, that sort of they're, they're, they're in that kind of young space? Now, I'm, I have a question for you. If you look at that table, what do you think is it normally on that table? Uh, the Christmas present. The Christmas present, exactly. We have a Christmas present. What do you do with a Christmas present? Um, you give it to someone else. You, you give it to somebody. And what happens if the person just looks and says, oh, that's very kind of you, and they walk away? Is, uh, that, is that what you did with your Christmas present this morning? What did you do? We opened it. You took it and you opened it, of course. So you have to receive a present and you have to open it. You would like to do that for us. Okay. Ah. And then just hold that up so everybody can see what it is. Can you describe it? What is it? Uh, chocolates. Chocolates, indeed. Special. Now, if you just want to sit over there for two seconds, okay. I'll get back to you in a minute. So, we give gifts. What is the gift of Christmas? Jesus, indeed. And that asks, begs the question for us who is this gift? We say Jesus, but there are lots of ideas about Jesus. And for some people, Jesus is a, a good teacher. He said some really nice things. He might even be a spiritual guru. He is a good person, an example. But we would say that he's so much more than that. The gospel says that Jesus came and he was the word. A word communicates. And Jesus is the word of God to us. And in the, the reading to, um, uh, of the Hebrews, the first reading we had, the writer says, in the past God spoke to our ancestors in various ways. In these last days he has spoken to us by his son. God has spoken. And I don't know if your mothers were like my mother, but she would say, I have spoken, therefore listen. And do what I tell you. There wasn't a long argument. We listened and we did. And when God speaks, we need to hear and do. 
the Hebrews writer continues and says that this word um, came and he was the maker. He made the universe. Everything was made through him. Echoed by John. The word was with God and through him all things were made. That means we have been made by God. And if you make something, who does it belong to? God. It belongs to, well, we belong to God because he made us. If you make something at school, whose is it? Uh, yours. It's yours, exactly. And if God made us, we're his. So that's what we are. We belong to God. Jesus comes as the word who is with God and he was God. And the writer to the Hebrews says, the sun is the radiance of the God's glory, the exact representation of his being. As we look to Jesus, we see God. Not only do we see God, we're told that he sustains all things. He keeps us going. And those last two years have been rather complex. And they've been quite different. And are you at school? Yes. And was it normal school? Did you go to school every single day? Or did you have to do school at home? Um, we did go to school. You went to school. And did you do online school with a computer? Sometimes. Sometimes. Do you know if your mom ever did that when she was at school? She didn't. This is completely unusual. And we're standing on the cusp of 2022. And as somebody pointed out, unfortunately, it is pronounced as 2022. So we trust that it won't be. But God sustains us. And no matter what the year holds, no matter how difficult it is, we know that we will make it through. And there are many people that are struggling with all sorts of other issues. And for many, employment has become a problem and businesses are struggling. There are many people who have been ill and have a slow recovery. There are a number of people who've lost loved ones and are processing their grief. Whatever the complexities of our life are, the word sustains us. And we need to rely on that. Not only does he sustain us, we're told he also uh, made purification for sins. And for us, that means all the baggage that we've brought with us from last year, all the, the, the issues that we've carried forward that are weighing us down, those regrets that we have, we're forgiven. In the word, we have a new start. So we have this gift given to us to use. And we open the gift up. So you got the short straw because you've just, what have you got? Have you got the present? Yes. Have you? I've got the wrapping paper. You've got the wrapping paper. That's the present. Yeah, pass me that wrapping paper. <laughs> um, pretty wrapping paper. Quite strong, but it took a while to get it off. Um, if you were um, Chinese, it would be particularly good wrapping paper, red and gold, which are auspicious colors in China. But is this what you, what you wanted? If you were given a present, would you keep this? Or would you, what would you take? The present. the present itself. It's not about the wrapping paper. And so often, we get caught up with the wrapping. The Christmas dinners that we're going to have and the presents that we exchange and all the stuff we do around Christmas is the wrapping. Even the church services that we come to and the religious duties that we do, that's not the gift. That's the wrapping. And we mustn't get caught up with focusing on the wrapping and think that that is it. Now, there are some small children that will get caught up on the wrapping, and you'll have them a beautiful present, and they will go, um, 
thank you, and they'll play with the box or the wrapping paper, that's fine. But as they get older, they realize, no, it's not the paper, it's the gift inside. And we need to recognize that as well. And this Christmas, focus on the gift. Be thankful for the wrapping, because it is beautiful and it does make a difference, but it's not about the wrapping. We're given a gift, we receive it. And we need to receive Jesus. The Gospel writer says as well, that to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And as we receive this gift that God gives us, we become his children. We're not just followers of God. We're not just believers. We are children. And God loves us as children. And as you go to your various uh, Christmas dinners, there will be, hopefully, some children. And some of them will be well-behaved, and I'm sure you're going to be very well-behaved, and some of them won't be. And the other children are far more irritating when they misbehave than your children, because we tolerate our children in ways that we find other people's children a little difficult to bear. And God's the same with us. We're not outsiders, we're his children. And he holds us and accepts us and loves us as we are. And we need to remember that. And we also need to keep receiving. One of the gifts that I have been given, and I know this because I got the email to this effect, is a subscription to a weekly uh, magazine. And so that really is a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> but that's what, what God's gift to us is like. We, we mustn't think, well, I've received the gift, I've opened it, and I now have it. I can stop thinking about it. It's a gift that we need to receive each week. It's a gift we need to receive each day. There is a once-off receiving, but it's an ongoing receiving from God. This gift isn't just once. It is for every day. Now, if I were to say, you can have that, but you must give me five rand, would that be a gift? No. No. It wouldn't be, absolutely. Do you ever pay for a gift? No. No, you don't, because then it's not a gift. Then you've bought it. <clears throat> and we need to remember that God gives us the gift. We can never pay for it. And all the things that we do, our religious duties and our going to church and our praying and our Bible reading and our giving money to the church and to the poor, that doesn't earn us anything. We can pay nothing for the gift. It is free. It is a gift. We just receive it. All those other things we do are a thankful response, almost sort of giving an exchanging of gifts and giving a gift small and insignificant back to God out of thankfulness. <coughs> but they're not the gift. And we never earn the gift. And now, if you were to open this, shall we do that? Yeah. This is a little bit tough, but we'll open it. Now, we have chocolate. What would the good thing be to, to do if you've got a gift like that? Um. To sneak off to your room and scoff them all yourself? To share them. Absolutely. Would you like to do that with those? Okay. okay. Share them. There you go. Do you think your mom and dad would like one? Yeah. I think. And there's some other children. Go and share those gifts with, with people. We have a gift. And if you just keep it to ourselves we undermine it. We've got something that is worth sharing. 
John writes, and he says, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. <clears throat> we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father. We have seen. John saw Jesus, he knew Jesus, and he shared Jesus. That's why we have the Gospels. This was a gift worth sharing. And so John did, and we must as well. Whatever the way is, however we do it, and every single person you speak to, um, you can share in a different way. There's no one way to share. But we need to take the gift that we have been given and share it with a world that is in need of the blessing. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your gift. We thank you for all that we receive from you. Lord, help us to receive it freely, joyfully, and to share it with abundance. We ask these things, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. Lots of sharing going on. <laughs> so let us pray. Lord God, Creator, Father, thank you for Christmas. As we busy ourselves with the traditions of this time, let us remember, in amongst all the wrapping of presents and the preparing of too much food, that your priceless gift was wrapped in swaddling clothes and the stable surroundings were unlikely to have been as pretty as depicted in a range of glitter-bestrewed Christmas cards. But, oh Lord, how we love this time. There is so much joy in coming together with family and friends, and as we celebrate together, it is with immense gratitude that we pause to thank you for the communities that we are linked to with bonds of love and care. We lift to you those who are unable to connect with loved ones at this time, the lonely, the sick, the bereaved, the marginalized. May they know your presence and comfort, Lord. We ask your blessing on those who continue to serve others, sacrificing much of this time to work steadfastly in refugee centres, in hospitals and all our health services. We ask you to watch with our lifesavers on crowded beaches. Lord, let courtesy prevail on our roads. Protect the street children and the homeless. Encourage those whose businesses are struggling to survive the onslaught of yet another wave of COVID infections. It's a never-ending list of a world full of need, Lord, and we cling to your promise of peace. Let the carol of the angels echo even now, Lord. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. As we lift our troubled world to you, Lord, help us to remember that solutions begin with individual people responding to your message. Like the shepherds, who simply heard your message and followed your prompting with joy and excitement. Let us all go as eagerly on a journey to look for you and find you forever accessible. Emmanuel, in a stable and enthroned in heaven. Help us to hold fast to the knowledge that whilst our world and our circumstances may change around us, you do not change. We thank you that your love, your understanding, compassion and healing are always available. And as we rejoice again this Christmas, let us find our place with the shepherds 
and to be filled with the same uncomplicated wonder and gratitude. Thank you, Lord, for Christmas. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And now amongst us here and for those who will be watching online, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Why don't you stand and give each other the elbow? That should be there. <laughs> which will help us to the member lord the wonderful message and to the receive the gift and in the receiving of the gift to receive the person and in the receiving of the person to receive his life and so we say god our generous father has given us all that we have and enjoy With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to this table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. The is Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honor be yours, Almighty Father, everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks, praise for your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ who for love of our fallen race humbled himself 
and was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of your Spirit and lived as one of us. In this mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible and we are caught up in the love of a God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in the remembrance of me. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Won't you sit as we say together our Lord's Prayer. And bowed in awe and humility before him, we say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who were called to his supper. Now we stand in a minute to receive. And as we receive, we receive a gift. And we take that gift into ourselves in a new and deeper way. So come, Lord Jesus, and by your Spirit, enter into us. And make the gift 
of the Blessed Lord a living reality so that in truth he may be in us and we in him. So in spirit draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and recognize his blood that he shed for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. So won't you stand and once you've received communion, be seated and we'll come round and we'll distribute the, the bread to you but because it's COVID, not the wine. But recognize the wine of the sacrament, which is here on the altar.
now as we prepare to go out into the world again, let us remember also that the challenge too is to, with God, take off our own wrappings and let him see the full person inside us because that's the person that God loves. That's the one for whom he died. The real me, not the that one wrapped up. Not the one who's hiding behind the colors of the world, but the real me. And when the real me meets the real Jesus, there is a real salvation. So unwrap his gift to you. And then unwrap your gift to him, which is yourself. So we give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. Son of Mary, Son of God, we have joined the worship of the angels. May we never lose that heavenly vision. Like the shepherds, we have rejoiced at the news of your birth. Help us to proclaim that message in word and deed to your praise and glory. So, Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ, our incarnate Messiah. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God, bless Africa. Guard our children. Guide our leaders and give us peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And very specially at the moment, we hold up to God our president and our mayor, who is a Christian. And we ask his blessing particularly on them at this time. And so may the Father who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world shed that love upon us, his children. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill us with joy and peace. May the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer, give us grace to carry the good news of Christ. And now may the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. Jesus, Lord of time, hold us in your eternity. And as we said, the Lord is here for us. Lord, help us to be here for you. Amen. Jesus, image of God, travel with us the life of faith. Jesus, friend of sinners, heal the brokenness of our world. Jesus, Lord of tomorrow, draw us into your future. Jesus, born in us today, make your light shine in and through us. So go in peace now to love and serve the Lord, to love and serve those around you and with gratitude receive the love and service of others. In the name of Christ, amen, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs>